So another form of circular motion that is horizontal is the conical pendulum that takes place through a ring. The situation that I'm trying to describe here is basically a single string through a ring that attaches two masses. So to repeat that again, here's a conical pendulum that is made up of a single extens inextensible string passed through a frictionless ring and it attaches to two different masses where mass M2, the middle mass, is greater than mass M1. So what you're basically having is you're trying to rotate M1, a smaller mass, to support and suspend a greater mass, M2. And you can see there are some obvious applications to this. So the key thing you must understand when you're solving these questions is that the tension in the string remains the same. In other words, the tension acting on M1 is the same as the tension acting on M2. And then we can go ahead to resolve vertically and horizontally just like how we solve questions related to the normal conical pendulum. So when we resolve vertically, when we're looking at M1, we can see that T sine theta is equal to M1g. In other words, T sine theta is equal to the weight of M1. And when we're looking at M2, T is equal to the weight of M2, obviously. They're acting in the opposite directions. All right, now let's go. So we can go ahead and resolve horizontally. When we look at M2, we can see that it has no resultant horizontal component. And therefore, the only resulting horizontal component we must consider is that of M1. So when we look at the forces acting on M1, the resultant horizontal component is equal to T cos theta. And since that is the only resulting force acting on the system and M1, M1 is going to undergo horizontal circular motion where the, where the centripetal force is equal to the horizontal component of the resultant force. In other words, T cos theta is equal to mv squared over r. So a typical question that you might be asked is to find M2 a mass that we don't know, but we know every single other um, component of M1. And therefore, we know that T is equal to M2G, previously said, and T sine 60 is equal to 5G when we're considering the forces acting on M1. And we can rearrange that to find T. When we combine them, we find that 5G sine 60, the rearranged from the above calculation, is equal to M2G. And therefore, we can find M2, which is equal to 5.77 times, which is equal to 5.77 kilograms. So a common question would also be to find V. So another common question would be to find V. And since we know that T cos theta, the horizontal component acting on the M1, is equal to the centripetal force acting on it, which we have to find with the unknown value, and that is T. So we can go ahead and find T. We know that M2 is equal to 5.77 kilograms. And then we know that T is equal to M2G. And therefore, T is equal to 56.6 newtons. And therefore, we can start combining it into the topmost formula with that. You can plug in values of M and R. And you can substitute. You can rearrange the equation to find V squared. And then you can find V. All right. So let's finish this video with some tips on how to solve these questions. The key tips are that the tension acting on M1 is the same as the tension acting on M2 because it's an inextensible string. All right, And every other principle, just like for the airplane, is going to act the same way as how we're going to solve the conical pendulum that I talked about in the original video. So thank you for watching my videos, and I hope you can subscribe, like, and comment on this video if it helps you a lot. And please watch my other videos, and just check out the next video, which is Vertical Circular Motion. Thank you.